guys, how's it going? It's King, and today I have a video that's long overdue. I'm gonna try to upload more. I just started college, but I've kind of been working my schedule around so I have more time to make videos. Uh, with that being said, if you want to suggest any tutorial ideas or maybe just videos for the channel in general, I have a couple things in mind, but uh, right now I'm pretty much open to anything so I can try to stay as active as possible. All of that aside though, I'm just going to get straight into the tutorial since I know that's what you guys are here for. Today we're going to be learning how to make cinematics. Not only how to make them, but also the fundamentals of cinematics that you can use to improve the way you make yours. Uh, just based off of the way I do mine or my process and how I make cinematics. Um, it's going to be pretty broad with the um, different things that I'm going to teach you. So. You're actually, if you're interested in doing film or maybe photography or something, you can take all of these uh, points that I'm about to give and you can also apply them onto there. I figured the uh, best way to show this to you guys uh, firsthand is to just give some, uh, uh, some examples of what I consider poor cinematics and what I consider ones that um, actually have uh, a lot of value in an edit. We're going to try to avoid making cinematics that don't really have a point being there, cinematics that are kind of just filler. We want everything to kind of be impactful and uh, we want it to set the pace for the edit. So I'm just going to get right into uh, some examples that I have set up. Um, right now I'm going to show you guys an example of poor cinematics. This was done by myself in about 2013, so three years ago. Um, we're just going to go ahead and look at the cinematics. If you just look right now, um, this is just for the motion track, but you can kind of see um, it's kind of just there. All of these cinematics are used as filler. It's They're, they're pretty linear. They don't have a lot of uh, movement or a lot of value to them. And it basically seems like the clips are much more important than the cinematics that I'm using to fill up that space. And uh, that's what we're going to try to avoid. We're going to try to make cinematics that have a lot more meaning. Uh, you can just see these ones are just a little bit boring. Um, granted, they're also very old, but we're going to try to step away from this because I still do see um, cinematics like this occasionally. Uh, what we're going to try to focus on is making cinematics similar to um, my edit Mountains that I made, which in terms of cinematics is probably one of my favorite edits. Um, if you just kind of look at the way the edit's made, you can already tell that the cinematics have a lot more value to them. It's, it almost seems like the clips are less important than the cinematics because um, those cinematics are what's keeping the, the pace of the edit, what's keeping it um, kind of interesting and, and what keeps it different from other edits. And I really think that making good cinematics, uh, not only for this, but in real life, um, footage can be really important in making um, a really diverse kind of um, edit or anything that you're doing with that. So um, this is just going to be based off of my process. So obviously mine uh, are a little bit different than how other people make them. Um, I just have a couple people here, uh, like 50. He... Um, has his own style, he has his own unique way of making cinematics, and um, basically what I'm trying to tell you guys from this tutorial is that um, I'm just going to be teaching you the basics of improving cinematics so that it has everything that it needs to have, and then from there you can kind of create whatever you want to make after that. Uh, another example is from uh, Doom. He has a really unique style, um, but his are clearly different from the way that I make mine. But I can still see parts that I'm about to show you guys, uh, I can still see them in his cinematic. So that's kind of the point I'm trying to get across is that it's going to be very um, broad with what I'm showing you guys instead of just specifically how to how like I make them. So um, we're going to go a little bit further into that and uh, we're going to, or at least I'll show you the uh, cinematic that we're going to try to recreate. Um, I already recorded this one previously for an edit, but um, we're going to try to remake it and 
right now before we get into that since I usually like to plan out what I want my cinematics to look like before I get into the game. I'm just going to dissect um, this cinematic into uh, five different categories that I've made. So the uh, five categories that I have are going to be the angle of the uh, shot, so kind of the, uh, the way that the camera is located. Um, the focus, which is going to be based on like the main focus and also um, secondary um, objects that you kind of put into focus, and as well as the background. Uh, the third thing we have is depth. So that's going to be very similar to what's being focused, but it's kind of going to be more of the uh, variety from the uh, background and foreground um, and the distance between those, kind of creating like a 3D image in whatever it is you're making. Uh, the fourth thing we have is going to be framing, so what we're putting in our shot and how we want it to um, look. So the best way that we can make everything we're kind of putting together um, the best way that we can frame that. And I'll get more into all of these in a little bit. Uh, the last thing though, or the fifth thing that I have, is probably one of the most important, but it's going to be the motion of the cinematic. Uh, not only the motion of the uh, in-game characters or anything um, animation-wise, but also the motion of the camera. So we're trying to get a lot of movement going on, um, and that's going to keep the cinematic interesting. So with that, those five things in mind, I'm just going to go ahead and play what it is we're going to be making. We're going to try to recreate a cinematic like this. You can see it's a, a lot slowed down. Um, so it's obviously not going to look like this when we put it into After Effects, but I'm going to get into that in a different section. So what we're going to do is kind of dissect those five fundamentals and we're going to um, kind of locate it in this cinematic before we get started. So I'm just going to start off with the first thing. We have the uh, angle. So I'm just going to go ahead. Um, you can see that the uh, video kind of curves. This is going to be uh, where I paused it now. This is going to be the main focus. This is what uh, we want our viewers to see when we make the cinematic. So this is basically the middle point of the cinematic, the part that um, you, this is going to be kind of what your vision is going to be if you ever plan ahead to make cinematics. So when I was thinking ahead, I thought I want the guy over here and I want all of this stuff placed where it is. So starting off with the first fundamental of my way of making cinematics, we have the angle. If you can tell, the uh, camera is uh, at a very low angle. It's almost as if the camera is placed on the floor and it's looking up at the character. Uh, I kind of prefer to have low angle uh, shots when I make cinematics, but I've seen people do um, high angle as well, and those work just as good. Um, in most cases, you want to avoid having your angle um, of the camera directly in front of the uh, character, because that kind of makes uh, it a little boring, because it's going straight, it's looking straight at the uh, character itself, which kind of gives off like this feeling that it was a little bit lazy. So we, we're always going to try to avoid keeping the camera directly in front of the character. So that's why you can see my um, angle that I have, he's going to be um, higher above the camera. So the camera is going to be low, it's going to be looking up at him. Uh, it's your preference if you want to have a higher angle uh, view, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, but I just prefer to have lower angles. The uh, second thing we have is our focus. Uh, this one's pretty easy to distinguish. You um, have your main focus is going to be the, the soldier right here, the character. Um, the good thing about these types of games is for the characters, they have a lot of detail on them, uh, usually from the clothes. So it's really easy to figure out what the main focus is just because of that, um, of that detail there. Um, I was also talking about secondary focuses. You can see um, this box here, I kind of use as um, something else that's not really the main focus, but it's also there um, and it's a lot more prevalent than uh, the background. So this would be the background right here, secondary focus is the box and the primary is the, um, the soldier. Uh, the next thing we have is our depth. So that's going to be, um, the best way to describe it is this box is clearly not a large box. It's just moved up in front of the camera so it looks bigger. 
um, what we're doing is we're making like a 3D image with our video, um, so things pop out. So with that being said, we have the um, the box here zoomed in. Uh, it's really close up to the camera. But then we have the soldier who's clearly a little bit further away, but um, isn't too far away from the uh, box. And then we have the background all the way at the end here. So that's creating depth. Um, in a lot of cases, and I know this is gonna be a bad example because it's from the uh, edit that we're trying to learn from. Um, if there isn't depth, and I think there was this cinematic here, uh, you can see there's nothing in the background. There's no depth at all, really. It's kind of just the character and then a blank background. Um, it really is difficult to pull that off. I, it is possible. Obviously, you don't have to follow every rule from what I'm about to teach you, but um, it's a lot harder to make it interesting when there's no depth going on and when there's nothing else in the shot. So what we're trying to do is create depth um, through the box by making the box closer and we're creating depth from the background here. A lot of people to distinguish um, what's further away, they, they like to blur out the background. That's called having a shallow depth of field. Um, I didn't do it in this particular case, but an example of that would be um, like this image right here has a shallow depth of field uh, because the main focus is sharp and you can see it clearly and what's further away is being blurred out and you're able to do that in this game if you know how to but for um, the sake of this being um, a basic tutorial I don't have it going on in the background um, but that's always just a thought for creating depth so we went uh, far enough into that the next thing we have is uh, the way we have the shot framed this is gonna be very important to um, making your cinematics diverse and you can see here that um, in a lot of cases people have the tendency to put their main focus in the middle uh, if anyone knows anything about film or photography here uh, you probably know something called the rule of thirds I have it pulled up on uh, this image here to show an example of it but you can see with the uh, rule of thirds you have these um, this 3x3 three three grid that you cut your video up into and you're basically using that grid to um, frame up your shot. So you can see this initial one on the left here. Uh, it's centered. There's um, the main focus, which is this rock here. And it's uh, put right in the middle of the shot. It's pretty boring. I mean, it it's a picture. It does what it needs to do. But it could have a lot more diversity in, into it. And that's where we... Uh, kind of offset it in the picture to the right here. If you look at the rule of thirds, you can see that the uh, rock is now uh, framed along the uh, left side of the uh, three by three grid. Uh, along with that, there's also these things called, uh, that I like to call sweet spots, um, which would be like where the uh, two lines intersect. So you see right here would be a sweet spot and the rock is pretty close to that. Um, so you try you you want to try to get to those sweet spots uh, obviously you don't want to fill every single one up but you can see this is a, a really good example you can see uh, this top of the rock is on the um, top left uh, I guess sweet spot um, and not only that but you also have this part of the rock uh, not only is it lined up with this lower um, column here but it's also um, it lines up perfectly with that sweet spot there so that's just a thought um, if we take that into this cinematic if we were to divide this up into a 3x3 three three grid you'd be able to see um, that the soldier is on the left column he would be lined up with the left column his head would be where the sweet spot is of that top left um, intersection with those um, those two lines there um, and not only that, but we also have this box being lined up with the right column uh, here. So you can see that this shot, it's, it's well framed. Um, and what this does is it creates a diverse um, set of cinematics. So not every single one is in the middle. And that's going to be really important to keeping a good pace for your edit because you want to have a diverse cinematic so your edit stays interesting. So with all of those set into um, this cinematic. We're gonna go ahead and try to recreate it. 
uh, now that you guys know what you need to do. Uh, if you want to follow along, I'm just using um, Black Ops 2 to record my cinematic, but you can use uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. This is just what I uh, feel the most comfortable with when I'm making my cinematics. So we have the fundamentals down. I've shown you guys some examples. So I'm going to go ahead and end this first part. Um, I've split it up into three sections. So this is going to be the explanation. Then we have the uh, recording and then how to edit it in After Effects, which is going to be pretty simple. Um, so we have the explanation down. I'm going to go ahead and cut off this part of the video and I will see you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, so we're back with part two of my cinematic tutorial. Uh, in the first part, we learned about the five fundamentals of cinematics that we're going to apply to make our cinematics a little bit better. And um, this second part here is pretty much only going to be recording the clip. So I'm going to be using Black Ops 2 just because I feel more comfortable with it, like I said earlier. Um, but since we're just going over broad concepts, you can actually use whichever game you want if you do feel like following along. Um, so if you want to use a different game, or if you're using console, because um, I'm using PC, you're going to be a little bit more limited with uh, your options, but you should still be able to do everything about the same. So I'm going to get right into recording this. The most important part that we are going to need to know for recording is our uh, three camera markers. We're going to have a, a beginning camera marker, which is basically just going to be the starting point. We're going to have the middle camera marker, which is going to be the most important uh, marker of the three because it's going to show us the um, vision that you planned out earlier. Uh, like I said, I always plan out my cinematics in advance, so uh, it's always a good idea to kind of get an idea of what you want to do. So I kind of already know what I want to have in mind. So for the second marker, it's going to basically be that image. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make it come to life. The third marker is just going to be the uh, kind of ending section where it's going to curve out and uh, pan away from the main subject. And I'll go ahead and have like an image of what I mean by that. Um, when I say that the cameras are kind of, kind of like curve around the subject. Uh, so hopefully you guys get a general idea of what we're going to be doing there. So I'm just going to get started and I'm going to apply something called a config with an external console. This is what I was talking about earlier for um, people who are playing on console and they're recording their cinematics. They actually don't have this, but uh, it really only changes the field of view, which is how zoomed in everything is, which you'll see in a second. And it changes the colors a little bit, but other than that, um, if you're using console, you can just zoom in yourself. This just looks a little bit nicer in my opinion. So I'm going to apply it. You can see the colors changed. Um, and if I go forward a little bit by a few frames, you can see that everything zooms in. This is just what I mean by the field of view. So it's really not too important, but um, I'm just using it so we can kind of duplicate that cinematic that we're going off of. So I'm going to start off with the first camera point. Uh, like I said, I had in mind that I was going to um, create a certain cinematic and before I decided to record it, I had the, the vision of I'm going to start it off behind this box. That way we're going to create depth um, because when you're planning out your cinematic, you always want to keep in mind those five uh, tips that we learned. So. I'm already thinking about depth. I'm thinking about having it put at a low angle. So I'm going to have it at the very bottom of the boxes here. So we already have two of our five uh, little tips applied here. I'm going to go ahead and set the first marker. You can see it's at a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to set it here. And in order to make our second camera marker the middle point of our cinematic, we have to time our uh, camera movement. And what I mean by that is, so we have the first camera here, everything is slowed down, and we want to even out the uh, timing between each camera marker so it's just one smooth motion. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I usually just count in my head um, about eight to 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here and just play it. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight seconds there. And I'm going to pretty much, um, since I said the second camera marker is going to be like the uh, main marker where you show everyone the um, vision that you were having, how you wanted to make your cinematic. Um, this looks pretty close to what we were going to uh, duplicate. It's, I think the field of view is a little bit higher, but that's not too important. I'm just gonna skip that for the sake of time. So we're gonna set our camera marker here. So I have a second camera marker, that's our middle one. Then the next part is really easy. You're gonna count uh, the same amount of seconds. So for me, it was eight. I'm just gonna play it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna have it curve and it's gonna pan downwards toward the ground. And if I zoom out right here, you can see that the camera is in a little bit of a curve. It's not just a straight line, so it isn't just coming from the box uh, in a linear motion like this. It's actually curving along the way. And what that's gonna do with a curve is it's gonna create a lot more movement. And because of that movement, um, our cinematics are going to flow together a lot easier. I'll go ahead and show you what our um, cinematic looks like so far. Uh, so I'm gonna reapply the config go into the dolly camera and we're just gonna wait to see how the cinematic looks. And we should be there. So we're gonna play it. You can see that it's it's not just going in a straight line, it's actually curving, it's looking upwards and then it's curving back down. And that's pretty much all we need to do for that. That's the um, general idea of what we do when we make these cinematics. Uh, it's up to you how you wanna record it. I use fraps to record mine. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to assume that this, um, everyone knows how to record their own cinematics, um, themselves with a capture card or whether they want to use a program or something. So for the second part, I just showed you how to apply those fundamentals. So we have our, um, depth right here because we put it behind the box. We have the angle, we framed it up because we have our character on that left side um, with that left column like I was talking about earlier with rule of thirds. And we've created focus, we have our own angle, we have the frame, and for um, the most important thing, we have motion and movement. And that's all five things that I was talking about. If you have all five of those right now, then you should be set to record it. I'm gonna go ahead and end off this part of the tutorial. The last one's gonna be very short. It's just gonna be putting it into After Effects. So I will see you guys there. All right, so if you have followed along with me, we are at the final part of the tutorial, which is going to be how I edit my cinematics in After Effects. Uh, this is gonna be by far the easiest and quickest part because most of the process was done in creating the actual uh, cinematic with all the camera angles. Um, so I'm just going to show you really quickly what I do by taking a few cinematics that I've already recorded. One of them being the uh, one we tried to recreate. And I'm just gonna drag them into a uh, composition here. And if you go ahead and look, this is the cinematic that we tried to uh, remake here and uh, there's actually a lot of slack uh, where there's nothing going on there's no movement whatsoever and you want to make sure that you don't have any of this where there's nothing going on so I'm gonna go right around where it starts moving so right about here it doesn't have to be exact and if you just click on the clip itself and press alt left bracket it's going to cut off everything to the left of your um, red marker here and then we're just going to do the same thing with the other side we would go to where it stops uh, this one is pretty on the dot but I'm just gonna say that it's right here and do alt right bracket and that's going to cut off the uh, right side and we're just going to really quickly do that with these other ones since these have um, a lot of slack as well so we'll do alt left bracket starts moving alt right bracket and the same thing here, left bracket and right bracket. And if you just look over, 
So now we have the cinematic completely in motion. Everything is moving for every frame of the shot. That's what we want to have. So we're going to create movement, which is one of the five things I talked about, um, by cutting off all that extra slack we have from the recording. So I'm just going to line these up now in order. And the first thing that I do is I'm going to apply motion blur, which... Um, is going to be really important because it can really change how a cinematic looks uh, because it's going to be really sped up. If I was to play it right now and just preview it for a little bit, um, you're going to notice that it doesn't look very good at all. It's, it's super slow. You can't really use it in an edit at this speed. So we're just going to go ahead and mess around with the speed settings. If you looked at my cinematic tutorial or my um, syncing tutorial with clips and cinematics this is going to be pretty much the same process but um, it's just going to be slightly different since that video was about two years old so since i don't have a song normally i would say you um, sync the cinematics to the beat but since i don't have any beats at all i'm going to just pretend that each second is one beat so i'm going to go to the first second and uh, this should be familiar to some of you guys, uh, if not all of you guys. And press Control alt t to bring up time remapping or right click time, enable time remapping. To bring up your time remapping layer, you're going to set a keyframe at the start of the cinematic and a keyframe at the end of the cinematic. And we're just going to crunch it together so it lines up with our beat or our one second. And we're going to do that with the rest of these, so Control alt t or Enable Time Remapping. Have one at the start, have one at the end. You can just ignore these extra keyframes here, they're not going to be important. Crunch this together to our two seconds. Same thing with this, Control alt t set a keyframe here, set a keyframe here and then crunch it together. So it's the span of three seconds. Again, if we were to play it now, it would still look very awful. Uh, you can see that the cinematic is pretty much just sped up. You actually can't even tell what's going on really. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that real quick by highlighting our keyframes and pressing F9 or going to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then we're going to go into this little graph symbol here to bring up our graph. From there we're going to pull this down, pull this one up. Um, if you watched my syncing tutorial, you don't want this middle part to be a flat line. You can see how it's curved a little bit. We get a little bit more freedom with cinematics because uh, they have a lot more frames since they're slowed down more so you're able to slow it down and speed it up faster if you want to Mission um, to go into the next cinematics, so I'll go ahead and show you that in a second once I finish This one you can see it was very quick um, It was it's pretty rough, but it's going to have to do so it speeds up here slows down on this this is what i called the middle point if you guys remember that main focus that we want to have for our cinematic um right here and this is what we wanted it to look like then it's going to speed up this is that transition part just due to the speed you won't be able to see what's going on it's just moving very quickly slows down speeds up slows down and it pretty much just acts as a curve. So now you're gonna go ahead and preview it. And it looks a lot better. So it, uh, you can clearly tell the main focus. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to do for the cinematics. That's how I sync them. That's how you see that really smooth transition. Uh, they're most likely doing it this way, um, where it curves inwards. This is exactly why we did the curve as well. But that just acts as a uh, really nice transition for the next cinematic. 
With all of this aside though, I'm gonna go ahead and end off this part, which is our last part. At this point, you should know your five fundamentals that I talked about. You should know how to record it, uh, your three camera points, and how to put it into After Effects. I'm gonna go ahead and end the tutorial off on that, and I will see you guys later.